It's so great to have Dr. Marion Walker with us here today. He is recently retired from Primary Children's Hospital and the University of Utah in Salt Lake City, and he chairs the Medical Advisory Board for the Hydrocephalus Association. With us here today is also Jennifer Bashar Johnson, our Education Manager, and my name is Amanda Garzon. I'm the Communications and Marketing Director for the Hydrocephalus Association, and this is our Ask the Expert series. So today we have an interesting situation from Joanne. And this is something that we, we hear about a lot uh, as well when we're fielding support questions at the association. Um, and it has to do with over drainage. So Joanne says that she's got a programmable shunt and as an adult, although she's at the most comfortable setting, she seems to over drain, she gets symptoms of over drainage after about six hours of being upright. So what she wants to know is, 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 is this a gravity issue? Is this common? Are there any solutions? Um, and before you even get started with that, I would just love for you to explain the difference, to explain what overdraining is and how that might manifest in terms of symptoms for people. Well, overdraining, overdraining is simply draining too much mm -hmm. of the spinal fluid. Um, uh, compared to the perfect amount that should be left in your head. Um, all shunts overdrain. Um, some do more, some are quite, not quite as much. And in fact, they probably have to uh, in the sense of we need to be able to get the CSF out so, so that it's not causing pressure. And with that said, there's no perfect shunt at this point in time, but um, shunts are perfect enough that they obviously are saving our lives and, and um, we're trying our best to mold them such that they're getting better over time. Over drainage, however, um, relieves some of that pressure in the head and when when your pressure in your head is is negative, it it causes a headache. You call it, well, some people call it a low pressure headache or a negative pressure headache, um, but it certainly can be a miserable headache. Mm -hmm. And uh, her symptoms or the question she's proposed uh, uh, is classic. A patient is, let's say they're asleep at night, they're they're laying down. Uh, they're not over draining. Then they're up for the first part of the day and they are over draining because they're up. And then at some point later in the day, they become symptomatic. They start getting the headache and they find that by simply lying down, uh, equilibrating things again, that they start to feel better. Um, now this question has, is very broad because uh, some people are so sensitive, they, they can't be up very long without having symptoms. Mm. Um, I see this um, relatively com com commonly in, in school children. Um, I especially see it at the end of the summer when the children first get back to school in the summer, they've been up and down and around and doing the things they want to do and perhaps even laying down for a few minutes uh, just because they know that's okay, I'm feeling better. But at school, they have to be up all day. Mm -hmm. And the classic presentation is by, by late morning, by noon, they're starting to get a headache. And that headache's not going to go away until they can lay down again. Now, I, I've had, personally, I've had great success with, with having patients lay down um, late morning, say 11, 11.30, even before the headache starts. That would be ideal. Mm -hmm. Lie down for a half an hour, come home from school, lie down for another half an hour. And it kind of resets the, the sensitivity a little bit and they can make it through the school day pretty well. So you're like cutting it off at the pass, yeah. not allowing it to happen. Yes, and in a lot of, a lot of patients uh, that works. 
So for an adult patient, patient that uh, that Joanne um, uh, is, we uh, the same should work. If she would find a time that she could uh, get flat for half an hour during the middle of the day, it probably would help. Now, in my experience, um, let's say we're talking about the child at school. Um, we found that it makes a difference for them to, to be able to lie down for half an hour. Uh, I would stay on that program for weeks and weeks and then ease out of it so that um, they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily doomed to have to do that forever. But um, the, the doing it for a few weeks to stabilize things uh, does seem to help. Now, Amanda, your daughter has hydrocephalus. Yes. And so if you have to continue on this path, is that something you can add into an IEP? It is. It is something you can add into an IEP or a 504 plan. And interestingly enough, uh, 504 plans do extend through adulthood. So I would be interested, Jen, at some future point for us to talk to an HR specialist mm -hmm. because under federal law, adults with hydrocephalus would also be protected in the workplace if they needed to take a break. Now, as you and I both know, not everybody wants it to be known that they have hydrocephalus and they don't want to call attention. One of the things that you said to me, Dr. Walker, when, and when you were just talking that resonated with me is that uh, you want to try and cut it off at the pass. So Joanne actually asked, do I just have to deal with it by laying flat every six hours? So I wonder like, Joanne, do it at five and a half and mm -hmm. maybe we work our way out of it. Um, but for an adult, I kind of almost see that more happening. Like you go take your lunch break, you, you time your lunch break and, and you have to go like out in your car or something and maybe recline back uh, in the front seat. If you don't have that option of laying down in your office, you don't have a couch in your office, or if you work in a job where you are standing up, maybe, um, in a factory or, or doing uh, work like construction and you don't really have a place to lay down. I think this, this plan works best if you can lie down before the pain starts. Mm -hmm. if, and, and therefore, it never starts. Um, most of the children, in my experience, have almost like clockwork. They'll tell you, 11.30, my headache starts at school, or 11 o'clock, or 12.30. But each person's different, but they, they can almost tell you the time. So if they tell me it's noon when the headache starts, I haven't laid out at 1130. Now, what if that time happens to coincide with, coincide with math class starting? <laughs> well, you, you have to be reasonable with, <laughs> we're still alive in the world, but uh, try your best to work around it as, as you can. Great. Well, Joanne, I hope that that gave you a little bit of insight. I wish we had the the magic bullet answer, the magic elixir that would take away the headaches that come with over drainage. But it sounds like this might be something, this is something that, that people with hydrocephalus have to live with and hopefully a help trying to cut that headache off at the past might alleviate some of the daily discomfort um, over time. And know that you might be able to speak to your HR professional about uh, what is protected under a 504 um, and if they could build that actually into your workday.